Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> Wrestling 101, class is in session Pay attention to the teachings, that's from Andrew and Derek I mean these guys making a killing with no competition Dynamic duo better than the Hardy Boys and the Dudley Boys Everybody make some noise, mess with them, you get destroyed They cannot be beat, take a seat, watch them do they thing on the MIC Face defeat, they cannot be seen like JC Oh my goodness, it's in killing spree, yeah? Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Wrestling IQ 101. I'm Derek on behalf of Wrestling IQ 101. Uh, you can listen to us, follow us on YouTube, iTunes. Just search at Wrestling IQ 101, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Instagram 101 as well. Um, today, very special day. We have a, a great guest with me here. Uh, we have Mark Torres of Mark Torres Photography. Mark, how are you doing today, man? I am doing just fine, Derek. How about you? I'm doing good, man. I mean, it's a little gloomy outside, you know, a little drizzly, but, you know, can't complain about that. Yeah, yeah, no, no complaints here. Typical yeah, New York New York weather for September, if you ask me. Typical New York weather, right? Yeah. <laughs> same thing. I'm Jersey. You know, we're, we're partner states, so. Okay. <laughs> we, we get the same, same thing going on there, same thing going on. Um, but, you know, uh, Mark, you know, I, I saw your work on Instagram. I saw you take a lot of amazing photos in uh, wrestling, uh, a lot of uh, uh, amazing photos of uh, animals, landscape, uh, a lot of different, just great photos. Um, you know, how, like, how did you get started in photography? What made you want to, you know, make this a passion of yours? Wow. Um, I would say I've always been the guy in the family or my circle of friends that's been the, the dude with the camera, you know? And it was something that I've always enjoyed, but I never really, really pushed for as to do it seriously until about, uh, I would say, seven or eight years ago. And uh, literally, it's like the, the light switch went on. You know, it, I, I was always fine just, you know, taking cell phone pictures, just, uh, you know, uh, cheap cameras, et cetera, you know. And uh, it's just like one day, it, it just, the switch went on. I, I just, it started with just a, a desire to get better, to just take better photos. I had friends on Instagram that, um, first of all, I never joined Instagram until um, I wanted to get better at, um, at uh, taking, the, you know, uh, better photos. Mm -hmm. And um, it just, something inspired me that I like, you know, I, I gotta, I want to get better, you know, I just, so other people's work and I just wasn't satisfied with, you know, the quality that I was getting with, you know, cell phones and regular cameras. And then I just started exploring, um, you know, getting better, better camera body. Uh, I learned about detachable lenses and uh, I didn't even know that was a, <laughs> that was a thing. And uh, it just, it just grew from there. Uh, I would definitely say the wrestling, specifically the WWE, played a big part in me becoming a photographer. Because if it wasn't for me wanting to uh, travel to the events and just get the best picture possible, I would still be taking uh, cell phone photos. Yeah, man. Yeah, no, for someone you know who started uh, you know relatively recently, you know, in uh, eight years. Um, you know, you do a pretty, you do a really great job at, <laughs> you know, what you do for sure. Um, you know, you talk about, you know, taking the pictures uh, in wrestling. Um, what kind of, like, gave you that passion for wrestling? How, what was that moment for you that made you say, hey, I love wrestling. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be a fan of this. Ooh, I've been a fan since I was a kid. I mean, I grew up a big Hulk Hogan fan, and I was definitely a Hulkamaniac. And back then, I was... Um, innocent and very naive so I really believed that wrestling was real and yeah. I think one of my first uh, big moments um, there was uh, when Hulk Hogan had that feud with King Kong Bundy and I don't know if it was Saturday Night Live or I forgot which show it was but um, I remember King Kong Bundy splashed him three times 
And I remember just bawling as a kid because I thought it was real. Like I thought, you know, Hulk Hogan got been hurt badly, you know. Yeah. And that was that was just it. Just it really took off from there because that's when, like, I guess wrestling kind of like became a little uh, serious, if you want to call it. You know, it was like yeah. my my hero who was so far had been, you know, practically invincible. Um, he, he got seriously hurt there, you know, hurt. And, yeah. uh, you know, it, it, that really got me uh, more invested, you know. And, uh, but definitely Hogan was my guy when I was younger. Um, I loved Bret Hart. Um, it, was, it, it, was ma- it was mainly Hogan and then Ultimate Warrior. Um, yeah. I really, I really loved um, when they when they had that moment at the uh, the Royal Rumble when they first you know locked eyes and clashed. I mean, I was <laughs> I was uh, excuse, excuse the expression marking out big time yeah. there, you know. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, but, oh my God, yeah, H- Hogan was my guy uh, growing up. Uh, he had a big part in um, in me becoming and staying a fan, you know, because it was. It was safe, you know. You knew he was gonna win every single time. He mm-hmm. would, you know, he'd get beat up all the time, but he'd make that heroic comeback, you know. Uh, easy to root for, you know. The twenty-four inch pythons, you know. He yep. said everything right. I, I, I was, I was just hooked. But it, it was funny too because I, in my circle of friends back then, I was the only Hogan fan. Everyone else hated him. Oh, like man. oh, he does the same crap every single time. Oh, I can't stand them, but that, that didn't that didn't deter me. I I still uh, was loyal to Hogan, you know. Yeah, you see, uh, <clears throat> I think it's um it's harder for our, like our kids nowadays. Um, you know, I have a son. He he watches wrestling as well. So right now he he watches wrestling. And he kind of has that feeling we had as kids, where you know it was like we thought it was real. But the thing that sucks for kids now is that there's so many other things out there that they can see that makes them question whether it's real or not. When there's, um, you know, uh, Ms. and Mrs. on TV, shows like that, or they see uh, Instagram when they see, uh, you know, hills and faces taking pictures together and posting on their Instagram, yeah. happy birthday. It's like, what's going on? These guys are just fighting. <laughs> like, why? So we, we definitely had, we had a great time, man, growing up at, as kids. And I was just like you, man. Uh, you know, I, I thought it was real too. And you know, that time I I loved guys like Macho Man. I loved um, oh, Roddy man. Piper. Yeah. So you know, and then it's like when you find out that it's not real, it's just like oh, so devastating. But it was just like, you know, as you get older, you learn like, you know, it's just like Santa Claus, like all these things, yeah. man. You, you learn that, about them. That that um, image wasn't shattered for me for a long, long time. You know, there was no Hogan <laughs> taking pictures with the Iron Sheik. You yeah. know, it was what it was on TV. That's what it was. There was no spoilers, nobody to ruin the, you know, the outcome of the matches for you. It was just, I, I, I was, sometimes I wish I could go back to being an eight-year-old kid because everything was just so much more fun back then. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a fact. They, they definitely, they lived by a different code back then than uh, they do now. Now it's, uh, I guess they, they call this the reality era. I think that's the <laughs> yeah. technical name. The technical name for it. So, um, yeah, what can you do, man? Good times, they, you know, there wouldn't have been good times if they weren't in the past, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> um, but, you know, like for you, when you when you go to these shows um, at these wrestling events, do you have like a certain technique to get these pictures? Like, because every picture you take, it's like, it, it literally looks like you're like right on the person. <laughs> they pose perfectly for you. There's no other fans in the way. It's like you, you do such a great job at that. Is there is there any like technique that you use to get these great pictures? Uh, there really is no technique, but mm-hmm. I know for me, I, my collection of photos that I have saved over the years is probably, I don't have an exact count, but anywhere from 40 to 50,000. That's just the mm-hmm. ones that saved, that saved, that made the cut. I've yeah. probably easily, the number of total photos I've taken is maybe triple that. Because if I'm if I'm going to a good show, I can easily take four or five thousand photos. Oh, you know, wow. I my philosophy is I want to capture every single moment possible, and I'll sort it out later. So um, I shoot as fast as I can, you know, um, and you just kind of like uh, 
you kind of get like the sixth sense, almost like a, like a spidey sense, you know, when definitely when they're looking your way, but you also kind of learn to anticipate, like it helps when you know, like the wrestlers move sets, you know, like they're, let's say Roman is setting up for the spear, you know, um, uh, Miz is setting up for the, uh, you know, for his finisher, stuff like that, you know, or when they're about to pose, you know, you, anticipation plays a, a big part of it, you know, because when you kind of feel it's about to happen, you got the camera ready and, you know, bam, you know, you got it. But a lot of it, it is just kind of going to depend on you, you know, it's like, as a photographer, you're going to have like, um, almost kind of like a feel like you, you're going to have your like your own vision of what you want to capture. So each match I'll go in like, you know, I want to like, uh, if it's Roman, like I want to see if I can get a picture of him hitting the spear, but him frozen in midair, you know, just right before yeah. impact, you know, if it's a uh, Alexa bliss, I want to get her doing, you know, her, her bliss pose, you know, with the, with the title. You know, yeah. um, luck plays a big part of into it because if you're seated in a, in a certain spot at ringside, that's never going to happen, you know. Um, so it, it, there is a lot that goes into it. And you also got to, you have to, your settings have to be right because um, I'm not always in the, in the front row, you know. So yeah. there's a... a there's a lot of editing that goes into that. So you need the right camera body. Uh, it needs to be taken a specific format. So you can always, so you can, um, how do you say, you can crop the photo and just get that moment that you want, you know? Cause sometimes the moment happens so fast that you just, you just want to like get it on the screen yeah. of your camera. And then you figure it out later, you know? But uh, yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a lot of work. Uh, I'll go into uh, I'll go into a, a WWE house show, and sometimes the camera does not leave from in front of my face. I'll spend the entire you know three hours, maybe just putting it down for slight breaks here and there. But uh, I'm I'm a greedy son of a gun. I want every photo, so <laughs> I'll, yes. I'll I'll I've I've left um, house shows where I'm just exhausted from holding the damn camera up to my face the whole the whole show oh man that, i could i could only imagine yeah i saw um you know uh, when i was looking at your instagram i saw i was like wait is this right and i saw it said you had almost like twenty seven thousand posts so i was like oh man this means mark <laughs> is like working man it's like that's a lot of work that's a lot of content so i can definitely believe you when you say like you're not putting that camera down for sure. Um, For sure. Yeah. When, when did you, um, like, when did you, you start to know, like, hey, like, I'm really doing a good job at this. And, like, like who was that first, like, repost from a big star or follow from a big star that you got in WWE that showed you, like, hey, like, I'm actually doing a good job at this and I'm going to keep going at it? Uh, when did I know I was getting good? Um, that's a tricky question because it took a lot of failure before I got good. Um, anybody that scrolls through is brave enough and patient enough to scroll through back all the way down um, years ago through my Instagram. You'll see how the quality of my um, photos has gotten better and I haven't taken those down. So it, <laughs> if you're brave enough and you scroll back, you'll see some Photos where I just is nowhere near the quality of how I shot today. You know, the editing's off, the colors are off. I'm pretty sure there is a photo there somewhere of uh, John Cena and Alberto Del Rio looking like uh, bronze Greek Greek god statues. You know, they're like I think Alberto Del Rio is his skin tone is almost yellow, and Cena is looking like some crazy uh, <laughs> statue that you'd find in. Italy or something like that. Oh, man. Um, it took a lot of failures for me to get good. Um, when did I know? I think when, um, when you start, uh, my motto has always been, I, I, I give a photo, I just, it's like, it's giving me, giving a piece of my heart, you know, because I just, I just want to share that excitement, that happiness that I captured at the time. And it just, I knew it started getting good when people just start giving it back, you know, like, hey, you know, 
uh, you inspired me to um, to start taking photos. Like, hey, you know, what a great shot. You know, uh, do you mind if I use it or just things along along that line? You know, but you, you just kind of feel it. Like you you just start getting confidence. You know, you just like you shoot. Like many times early on, I would shoot and I would not know like oh man, I don't know if I nailed that shot. And I'd be just like, I'd be praying that when I go home, I'm like, oh, please, please, let me have nailed that shot. Or uh, I hope I can fix it in, uh, in editing and it comes out good. Now, you know, today I shoot it. I know I nailed it, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, um, what was my first big repost? Uh, oh, that's a good one. Uh, for the females, oh! My first big repost. It was a great day, but it was also, it drove me insane. Oh, it man. was a Christmas show, a Christmas holiday show at Madison Square Garden. And both the Bellas were there. They competed in, I think, a big four or five women uh, tag match. Uh -huh. So I had, at that time, I had a long, cheap, but it zoomed very far camera. So I was at ringside, and the, the Bellas did their thing. I don't know. If they, I think they were heels. I, I forgot if they won or lost their match. But they're both walking away, and it was um, Nikki and, uh, and Brie. They're walking away. They have their Christmas outfits. And I just I took the shot, and it's of them walking away down the ramp. And that night, they both reposted the same picture. They loved it that much. Problem was, I was a complete nobody back then. So I'm looking on Instagram and I see everybody and their mother is reposting that picture. I'm like, hey, hey that's, that's me. That's my picture. But when oh, you're man. a nobody, nobody cares. Like, nope, Nikki posted that. We don't, we, who are you? How do we know you posted that? You yeah. know, so that, that was my first big repost. Eventually, it drove me nuts. And that was probably the big driving point behind me uh watermarking or signing my photos whatever you want to call it so at least i know the signatures out there you know so whoever wants to repost it that's fine but at least i you know hey i did it, okay <laughs> you know yeah no that's that's always a good thing to to do for sure especially in your line of work you know because you know people will post them photos no problem man <laughs> and, you know it always sucks like you said uh someone like you you're putting in that work you know, taking 4,000 to 5,000 pictures a show. Yeah. And then people are just like, oh, whatever, posting the picture, whatever. And, like, and, no and, you know, credit don't get, given. Don't get me wrong. I don't do, I don't do what I do because I'm expecting um, congratulations each time or I expect a repost every time. I do it because I genuinely love it. You know, I see yeah. all the WWE wrestlers. Like, I don't really detest or hate anybody. You know, yeah. especially as humans, you know, because I've met a lot of them. They're all just such great, such great people, such great, mm -hmm. kind people, you know. So I really do enjoy um, posting all these photos. So I, I'm not going out there like, you know, I'm not a, a Scrooge or something, you know, like, mm, you know, I don't want nobody reposting my posts. I want all the credit. No, you know, I really yeah. don't care, you know. It's just, it's one of those things, you know. If they say thanks, if they give me a like, you know, if they repost, oh my God, I'll be, I'll be thrilled. You know, for me, it's sometimes it's better than willing, uh, winning a, a, a million bucks, you know, mm -hmm. as a photographer, it's like, there's nothing that means more than someone telling you that they enjoyed your photo and that it left an impression on them. So when I see a superstar liked it, reposted it, you know, it's a, it, it means the world to me, but I don't go into each post like expecting that, you know, if it happens, it happens. But, you know, I generally do appreciate when they show their appreciation. Definitely, definitely. I could uh, definitely see that. I definitely feel the same way when it comes to, uh, you know, the type of stuff I do as well. Um, do you find it, it easier being in New York, like to to like kind of like find creativity? I feel like in New York, uh, it's 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 just a, a melting pot of creativity it's just you know like they say you get if you can make it in new york you can make it anywhere and um i just feel like you know in new york it's it's so especially when it comes to photography i feel like you can find so many wonderful things to take pictures of do you do you feel kind of feel that same you know sentiments and feel like you know it's, it's easy to 
to, you know, get up creativity living in New York? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I've actually, it's funny that you mentioned that because I've recently started something on my Instagram where I, I'm 45 years old and I've lived in New York my entire life. And I, it just dawned upon me that there's so much to New York that I haven't seen or experienced. And so now it, I'm making it my mission to really photograph as much of New York, every cool spot, every, anything even remotely exciting, cool, dramatic, you know, I want to capture with my, with my camera, you know, yeah. um, there are a ton, there's a beautiful scene out there. You just, sometimes you just got to open up your eyes, you know? So I, I have, I have my friends uh, right now sending me suggestions. Hey, you got to go here. You got to go here. You know, um, believe it or not, the other day I visited Bryant Park for the first time. 45 years old, and I've never been to Bryan Park. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so they wanted to revoke my New York privileges for that. You oh, know? <laughs> but yeah, absolutely. There's so, so much stuff to do, you know? I mean, just landscape, portraits, go to Central Park, take portraits. There's so, so much stuff, so much opportunity to do. You know, you, you have a vision in your head. There's so many ways to, uh, to make it happen. Yeah, definitely. Uh you know, seeing you with your Mets, I was I was expecting to see some Mets players on your uh, on your page, man. We gonna you gonna you gonna get to that? You gonna when we finally you know can go back to games, we gonna see some Mets players up there. You know, the tricky part with that is that, um, and it's it's a big uh, pet peeve of mine. Um, you go into these venues, and many of them, they, I can't bring my best gear in. Oh, you know, so I have to adjust and bring the best gear that I can bring that won't get me kicked out of the arena. Gotcha. You know, so gotcha. the city field, it's like the longest lens I can bring is maybe uh, 85 millimeter. But that the one that I have there is kind of big. So I don't know. I brought in a different style of one. But I don't know if the one I have now will, will get me even get me in, you know. Gotcha. Um, so it's tricky because I'll give you, you said Mets. Um, City Field, I would want to sit, and I have sat on like um, first base side because there you could get, um, you can shoot them when they're batting. You can see them uh, when they're, shoot them when they're running to first base. You can shoot them uh, congregating at first base. You can shoot the players as, you know, the, they're headed back to the dugout, you know, coming out the dugout. So you have a lot of, you know, uh, action going on there. But you need the, the right lens. You know, if, if I have a short lens, you know, there's only so much. If I have a short lens because that's the longest I could bring in, there's only so much you can do. And I have a certain style where I want to capture as much detail as possible. So... I don't want to be, you know, bringing in a, a short lens and they're like, you know, 100 feet away from me and it turns out it just looked like a, re a really, really nice cell phone picture. You know, that's, that's not what I want to do, you know. But um, the thing with City Field is um, before this whole pandemic started, I don't know if you remember, they started putting up the, the nets oh, all yeah, along yeah. the first and third baseline because people were getting hit. So if that net is there... That that's a wrap for me because um, shooting through the net and being you know unless you're like it's you're in that first row with the net in front of you that's maybe the only way you can shoot through that net. But if you're like even two or three rows behind that net, that net is always going to be in, in your picture unless you have a mega gigantic zoom lens, which I know I can't bring in. Gotcha. gotcha. So there's a okay. there's a lot of things that that drive me nuts. Okay. Yeah, I got you. I see they, they, they're making it tough for you, man. They're making it MLB. They want their money, man. They don't want nobody else to get their pictures. <laughs> and that's just the baseball aspect. I, I'm not even going to get into the WRE. There are many WRE venues that won't even let you bring in a detachable lens. So, oh, man. Uh, so I've actually had to get um, another camera just for WRE events. It's a very good camera with a, a, a fixed lens. But it's, it's like, it's very short. So I either have to be seating 
um, uh, by the ramp where the wrestlers come out, which is a great spot for photos, or literally be uh, first row ringside, you know? And sometimes, you know, because everybody has such a great fan base, you can't get those seats all the time, you know? Yes. Even if you're quick, you know? So sometimes they're just, just someone quicker, you know? So it, it's, it's not like, I wish, it, to me, it, it's maddening because you can't sell photos anyway from the WWE. You know, yeah. second, if I started pr promoting, <laughs> if I was pr promoting that I was selling my collection, I mean, WWE would come after me in a, in a heartbeat and they'd take down my Instagram. So yeah. if I can't sell the pictures, what does it matter what lens you bring in? Okay, I understand you don't want to bring in a gigantic lens and, um, you know, accidentally knock, you know, knock it into the person in front of you or to the side, but... Yeah. Yeah. Medium-sized lens. I don't see what the problem is. You know, yeah. that's yeah. just me. Uh, hey, and I, I, I feel you on that too, man. <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of rules all the time. Every time you're going into any of these buildings, but you know, I guess we just got to deal with it, right? <laughs> yep. Um. So, what, what, what would you say? Um. What is your favorite, or uh, I'll say, what is, what is the biggest wrestling event that you have ever taken pictures at? Ooh. Uh, probably uh, the Summer Slam at Barclays Center in New York, in Brooklyn, where um, uh, Finn Balor and uh, Seth Rollins uh, faced for the uh, Universal title. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the main event was Undertaker and Lesnar. Yeah, yeah. I may yeah. be confusing the, the two main events, but... Uh, I, I think, uh, I'm pretty no, sure they... I think they were on that card, right? I, I, I went to back-to-back -back Summer Slams. I, I may have mixed up the two main events there. That might have been Lesnar and Orton. But I know the, definitely the one you – know, you, know, you know what? I'll change my answer. Both of those Summer Slams. Because yeah. uh, the first one was um, Lesnar against Undertaker, which was phenomenal. And then the one year after that was a Finn Balor and Rollins. So okay. that was probably the biggest I've, uh, I've been to. Yeah, that, those are good ones to beat to, too. I, I went there as well, me and my uh, partner. Um, we were both – we were at all of those. I guess they went, like, uh, like three years straight, right, I want to say? Yeah. Went, or, yeah. Yeah, we went to all three years. It was very tiring with that, NXT, Raw, Smack. It was just yeah. – it, it was good, at the, but tiring at the tiring, same time. Tiring, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, besides photography, um, do you have any other um, hobbies or any talents that, you know – Anyone that didn't know you wouldn't know that you had? Uh, definitely traveling. You know, yeah. um, I, traveling is definitely a big passion of mine. You know, in the past few years, I've been to uh, Italy, Hawaii, Spain. Uh, it's just, there's such a rush you get from experiencing another culture, just getting on that plane, leaving all your stress and worries behind for a week or 10 days, you know. Uh, seeing new people, for me, you know, just getting all the landscapes, uh, just, just, uh, I, I, you can't be travel photography, you know. Uh, if I, if not travel, then obviously I'm a big sports fan, uh, New York Mets fan here, obviously, New York Knicks fan here, New York Giants fan, and New York Rangers. So two of those teams give me a tremendous amount of headaches, <laughs> and uh, the other two are uh, are okay for now. Oh man, yeah, I was gonna say, man, that's that's four big headaches right there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh man, but don't worry, I'm I'm a Tampa Bay fan, so hopefully this is supposed to be this is supposed to be the good side. We'll see what happens, man. Week one was you know expected, you know we got to gel together, so. We'll see what happens there. My teams are all over. I'm Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Dallas Mavericks, um, New York Yankees, and uh, New Jersey Devils. So Devils and Yankees make sense. Devils. But everybody else always asks me, like, how the hell did you become a Mavericks and a Tampa Bay fan? But I don't know. They, they've just been my teams for years. So. so Speaking of the Devils, I was in the building in uh, 1994 for Game 7, Rangers and Devils. Oh, man. Uh, Eastern Conference Finals. And that game, I don't know if people, for those that don't know, that game went into double overtime. Mm -hmm. And that was the most pressure-packed event I've ever experienced in my life because 
my team is not only trying to get into the championship, but they're fighting a curse. At that time, they hadn't won anything in 50 years. Yeah. So the Devils actually tied that game up with about seven seconds to go in regulation. Mm -hmm. And I remember being in my seat, and you could hear a pin drop in the garden. I never heard such silence. Oh, and man. everybody in that arena probably was just almost sitting, sitting on their behinds, just waiting for the Rangers to blow it in overtime. And one overtime, and then second overtime. And I remember when, um, when the Rangers scored, we were just hugging anybody that moved. I was hugging people I didn't even know. It <laughs> was just complete chaos. One of, easily one of the biggest even what biggest moments uh sports wise in my life easily yeah yeah no I, I can only imagine being at something like that um the only thing I, I have that's like uh close to that and event I've been to is when um uh college football uh at, you know Rutgers used to be good when we mm -hmm. uh we had Ray Rice we had Brian Leonard at the time yeah. we even had uh Kenny Britt at wide receiver and this is the year we were actually ranked and we were like number three in the whole country. And I remember we beat Louisville and they pushed us up to number three. And I was like uh, the craziest time and all the fans, all of us ran onto the field and everything. It was like the biggest moment in Rutgers University history. And I was like, that's, that, that's like the closest thing I have to that. And, uh, and it, it's definitely an amazing feeling when, you know, your team prevails and, you know, comes through and, and does something good. Especially when you've been waiting a long time yeah, for to yeah. do something. Good. <laughs> oh, and if I could only get that feeling with the with the Knicks and the the Mets, because I actually uh, full disclosure, I started following baseball in 1987, the year oh, after the Mets won the World Series. So technically, yeah. I'm a bandwagon Mets fan, <laughs> except they haven't won anything, you know. So yeah, I, yeah, you know, yeah. I've seen highlights of the, you know, the 86 team, you know, but it doesn't, it, it feels like a fantasy in the history books that just like, yeah, 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 whatever, you know, that's a, like, you know, uh, Abraham Lincoln or, uh, you know, George Washington, you know, history that you're supposed to know, but like, yeah, 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 whatever. You yeah. Know? Yeah. You see, and with me, the thing that, the thing that sucks now for us being Tampa Bay fans now it looks like anybody who says they're a Tampa Bay fan is a bandwagon <laughs> fan just because Tom Brady's been there. And I've been a, a Tampa Bay fan since 2000. So <laughs> it, it, it's just annoying. You got to argue it to everybody and say, dude, I've been. You can see I got on my wall right there. I got a, a Jameis Winston jersey hanging there still. <laughs> but even though he's giving me so much heartache, I, I still oh got his jersey gosh. up there. Just, you know. I, I so have a cool. I have a coworker who's a huge uh, Tampa Bay fan, and it was surreal when we found out that you know uh, Brady was coming to the Bucks, mm -hmm. and he was so nervous during the whole lockdown and pandemic. He was like, I, I gotta have my football, you know. <laughs> I cannot. Now that we got TV, you know, we can't. You know, uh, yeah. we cannot yeah. have football, you know. <laughs> yeah, no, we 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 we, all, we got a, a two year contract with him, so. We got to get what we can get while we can get it, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, but, so um, I would ask you, when you, when you take pictures, like what is your favorite object to take pictures of? Like, is it the wrestlers? Is it the animals? Cause I saw you do great with that. Is it, um, you know, like the buildings, the landscape, like, like what's your favorite thing to take pictures of? I mean, all of them give me, it sounds like a cop out answer, but all of them really give me joy in different ways, you know? Yeah. Um, there really isn't a bigger rush, you know, when I'm attending a WWE live event and, you know, uh, Sasha Banks walks by. Um, for me, the ultimate was, um, was it last year. Um, last year and the year before that, when I got to see my all-time favorite Stone Cold at, um, uh, was it at the Garden? Yeah, it was at the, at the Garden for both. Yeah, because um, it was for... I first seen him at Raw 25, mm -hmm. and then at uh, there was a Raw last year where he did that uh, the whole beer bath thing with uh, Cedric and um, and uh, Cedric and Rollins and um, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the 
War Raiders, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. I actually never got to photograph Austin um, during the whole Attitude Era. So for Raw 1000, I'm sorry, Raw 25, it was such a surreal experience when I finally got got him, you know, uh, on the turnbuckle with his, you know, um, when it was classic pose, it was like, it just felt like I just unlocked my ultimate achievement, yeah. you know? Um, I mean, wrestling is just, you get such a thrill. Like, there's no bigger thrill. Like, you get that that cool picture, you just did that, that uh, uh, one of the, like, Alexa or Sasha or Bailey smiling at you, and you know, like, I can't wait to get home and uh, upload these photos and just see what, you know, Instagram is going to say, you know, yeah. and yep. knowing that I'm sitting on so many of these photos, you know, I, I, I still have what, 40, 50,000 photos. They're mm -hmm. photos. And during this time, I'm just going back in my files and just digging out more and more that I, wow, I never posted this, you know, and that's what I've been basically doing. Cause I can't obviously, you know, go to any events, but, um, Wrestling photos give me a, a certain level of joy. Landscape photos is starting to pick up now, especially now that I'm travel, uh, starting to uh, go landscape hunting around uh, New York. Uh, portraits, you know, people like if I'm uh, if I'm shooting a wedding and just you know that moment of the bride and groom looking at each other before the, you know they finally say I do or during the first dance, you know, stuff like that. When I know I'm gonna get a, a reaction or leave that just leave a mark on someone with one of my photos I, I can just feel it and that 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 just that just brings me happiness you know so they just they all bring me happiness in different ways definitely yeah i could i could definitely see that for sure um so for um you know would you say the austin picture that you take is that your favorite picture you've taken or do you have like a a picture that you've taken that like sits in your heart that like, hey, this is my favorite picture that I'm taking all the time. Uh, definitely. Or is that too hard to choose? And so I get that question asked all the time. Um, there are just so many, there are just so many photos, you know. Uh, definitely, um, I'll run through a few. Definitely, uh, there's one I have on um, for Raw 25, Austin. Um, he's, he kind of did the beer bath thing. He took the two beers and just. Yeah. So I I caught I caught that exact moment where it's like you freeze the the beer droplets. So it's yeah. like this big mist in the air as he's on the top turnbuckle. Um, the other one um, last year when he was at um, at uh, at the Garden for Raw, um, he is. He finally came towards uh, my direction at ringside, and he's calling for uh, the the most accurate thrower of all time, the guy that throws him the beers. Yeah. So I caught I caught the moment where Austin is literally like this, and l literally seeing the beer into his hands, oh, man. and I was just like, oh my god, this is just this is just amazing. But what's even more amazing was that. He reposted that picture on Twitter. So oh, for like 48 hours, I was just like, uh, I just, <laughs> another incredible life achievement uh, right there. You know, I was just on, on, uh, on cloud nine for that. Um, another one that's dear to me is um, it, I was at the garden for a house show. Um, AJ Styles versus Kevin Owens, and Kevin Owens was the uh, was the U.S. champion, and AJ Styles pinned him to win the title at the Garden for a house show, and it was just like every, everyone was just mind blown because it just it just happened so so rare, you know. So I caught I have a picture there where I caught AJ Styles um, like about to leave ringside and he's just looking down at at his his new title and he just looks so so proud you know like yeah i did it and i did it at the garden you know i was like oh man so um i tried to get that picture out as um quickly as i can um because i think they took an intermission there 
So while everyone was going nuts on Instagram, I was like, okay, I'm going to run a quick edit and stuff and post this picture. And of course it, it, uh, it, uh, it, uh, it went nuts, you know? Oh man. Um, that's, that's nuts. Other than, that, <laughs> other than that, that, there's just, there's just so many, you know, uh, it's, yeah, I can it's, imagine. It's, it's, it's so hard to narrow it down. You know, those, those are the three that come to mind. Definitely. I can imagine that you said you like to travel, um, uh, favorite place outside of the U.S. that you've taken pictures? Oh, Italy. Italy, yeah. Italy, Italy. And and it was funny, I have to go back because when I went to Italy, I think this was three years ago, I still wasn't shooting at the level that I am right now. So there, I basically, I, you could say I lucked out into some shots. Yeah. You know, so I mean, I do have some good shots on my website from Italy, but there are also a lot of shots that like, oh, I could have just shot so much better. So, um, but I definitely have to go back. Um, maybe when the pandemic clears, maybe when they lift restrictions, I'll even go next year, but I have to go back. There's just so much uh, beautiful content there. You know, it's like, I just have to do a full reshoot and uh, and so I can be happy and not uh, get and get this out of my mind because it just irritates me. Oh man, yeah, that, that Italy is definitely a, a beautiful place for sure. Um, now you you also you have um, like you have a book with all with pictures that you take right that you get autographed by. Superstar? Yes, yes. Yeah, tell 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 me about that and how you know how you you thought of you know putting that together. Um, the book is like basically like uh, volume one of some of like some of my greatest hits. So uh -huh. I put it together way back when it feels like a lifetime ago when uh, we're uh, able to go to WWE live events with the intention, you know, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get them to sign each one of these, you know. Um, ironically, the first person that signed. Um, my book is not a wrestler, but a very good friend. And that's, um, you may have heard of her, uh, the legendary Kimber Laskick of uh, Instagram. She yeah, goes course. around, if you thought I took a lot of photos of, uh, of a wrestler, she does it times 10. And she's yeah. taken just some fabulous <laughs> photos. And, but she's, a, she's just a really good friend. And I wanted her to have the honor of signing my book first, you know, but um, I basically, who did I get? I got uh, Sasha Banks to sign. I got Alexa Bliss to sign. I got Kevin Owens to sign. I haven't gotten Rollins yet. Um, I just, I just got so many. And these wrestlers are just so kind. I got the Miz to sign. They're just so appreciative. Like I showed uh, the picture I got of The Miz was from that SummerSlam in Brooklyn where he defended the title against Apollo. I don't know if you remember, he came out with uh, Maurice. So yeah. I got a picture of them together, you know, Miz with the title and Maurice right there. And Miz just looked like so genuinely like, I'm gonna use the word touched, but he was like, like this is such a good picture. That, that, just, that just meant so much to me. I'm like, the Miz, one of the best heels of all time. He's telling me, you know, wow, like, thank you. I like, I, I just, I just couldn't believe it, you know, but, um, but most of, uh, most of the pictures there are basically like a who's who, a, most of my best pictures. Some of the, um, I usually try and put in a photo of that. I, if I've got to, um, meet the wrestler. So hopefully the next time I see them, they can sign the picture of me and them together. So me, yeah. when I finally got Alexa Bliss to sign the picture of me and her together, it was like, oh my God, another, another life achievement, you know? Yeah, see, that's awesome, man. That's definitely awesome, man. Yeah, uh, like you said, uh, Kimber Laskick, uh, same, like she has a great, great portfolio as well. Um, both of you guys are both top notch. And, um, you know, as a wrestling fan, it's, it's great to just follow both of your pages and just see, like all the great pictures you guys take for sure. Um, you know, one thing I always wondered, uh, being a photographer, you're always taking pictures of everything. Like who takes pictures of you? Or how do you take, <laughs> do you take pictures of yourself? Like how, how do you get pictures of yourself? 
the answer is no. I, I don't really, if, if I were to show you my, uh, my, um, the camera, my camera roll on my phone, there's rarely any pictures of me uh, in it, you know? So uh, when I do go to WWE live events, they, there's usually uh, a guy or two there, you know, coordinating that I, uh, that I can trust and they'll take the pictures of me with the, with the superstars. But if let's say I go on vacation or whatever, it's basically if I don't have my, uh, my super annoying uh, selfie stick, you know, uh, I ain't get, I ain't getting the, the I ain't getting any uh, pictures of me, you know. Oh man! But I'm, it's fine because I, do, I much prefer to be behind the camera than in front, you True. know. True. That's that's just how I am, you know. I got you. All good. All good. I, I don't blame you for that one. Uh, I'll, uh, I'm gonna wrap it up on on these last couple questions right here. Um, first, I know you like you said you have a wife. I have a wife too. And for me, I'm a big wrestling fan. And you know, with being married to a wrestling fan comes a lot of responsibility. Cause I got a lot of action figures, a lot of wrestling belts, a lot of <laughs> pictures and stuff hanging on the wall. Um, how does your wife deal with, you know, just wrestling being like this big love for you? I'm pretty sure you're gonna say she supports you just like my wife supports me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to help you out here, see? <laughs> so um, how, how, how does that go? My wife understands, and she, you remember when we started dating, et cetera, she knew that wrestling was a big part of my life. So she understands, you know, Monday nights, Friday nights now, you know, when the pay-per-views are on, that I'm just, it's not that I'm zoned out and uh, ignoring her in a different planet, you know, that's just how it is, you know. Yeah. But truthfully, my wife is one of the biggest reasons that I am a photographer right now because she was the one that pushed me, especially during that critical stage, critical time of my life where I was like kind of testing the water, like, hey, is this is something that I really want to do, you know? Is this something that I can be good at? And she encouraged me, she pushed me. She said, no, you can do this. Go out and do it. I see the talent. This is what you love. You've always been the guy taking um, the, the photos at our family gatherings and stuff, go out and get it, you know? Yeah. And she, she gave me one of the biggest thrills in my life. At, true story, at our wedding, she busted out and gave me my first professional lens. Oh, wow. One of my most important lens that I still use today, especially for weddings. And I remember... At that time, when it first came out, because it's a Sony lens, it was on it was on back order for like six months. The demand for it was so hot, and I was like, I remember going to the wedding, like uh, you know, I was still thinking about because that you know now at that point I'm starting to get obsessed with cameras. I'm like, oh man, that cameras that lens is gonna be so good. I'll get it someday, maybe by the end of the year or something mm -hmm. like that, you know. And at the wedding, I remember she just stopped everything, like, oh, I have an announcement, and she pulls out this box, and I got something for you. And I open up that box, and I see that lens that I've been basically dreaming about. I let out, like, a freaking Roman Reigns scream, you know, like, Ooh, ah! I was just <laughs> blown away. I mean, I, oh, my God, she gave me one. That was just, I mean, at your wedding, you're getting the uh, dream lens that you wanted. I mean, it, just nothing better, nothing better. I mean, I just, I have just so much love and appreciation for her. I mean, I would not be a photographer without her. So, point blank. Awesome, awesome, man. With that, we, we, we don't want our, you know, our wives to take it lightly when we say they're our better halves, because they're, they're definitely our better halves for sure. <laughs> um, you know. Uh, can you just tell everyone who's listening, um, just tell them about your website that you have um, and the services you provide. If they want to get in contact with you and, and you know, schedule services with you, how they can do that as well. Uh, my website, simple. Um, it's Mark Torres Photography, but I really didn't want that long URL. So it's my old name that I used to use on Instagram, www.mator, M-A-T-O-R-R, 1207.com. And there you can see samples of all my work, weddings, landscape, WWE, animals, everything. And I, 
label myself as a photographer that shoots everything. So if you need real estate, if you need a wedding done, if you need portraits, if you need a football, your son's high school football game done or engagement photos, everything, I do it. Awesome, and if man. they and if they say that Derek recommended you, I'll even give you a discount. Oh man, look at that! See, and I'll send Derek the royalties too. Oh, that's a man. promise. <laughs> oh man, see, look at that. That's that's too good. That's too good. Oh man, yo, Mark, um, I really appreciate you taking this time out. This has been a lot of fun. Uh, very uh, great combo getting to know you and who you are as a person, and you know everything you do. And I definitely appreciate you taking out this time for me. Oh, much, much appreciated. Thank you so much. It was just, it was a blast. I mean, it feels like I just logged on a, a few minutes ago. You know, I can't believe all this time uh, flew by so quickly, you know? Yeah, man. Time flies when you're having fun, man. <laughs> uh, definitely. But make sure uh, you check out Mark. You check out his Instagram, uh, Mark, Tor Mark Torres Photography. Check out his website, uh, www.matorr1207.com. Uh, make sure you schedule that service with him. He's very great at what he does. Um, for us, this is uh, Wrestling IQ 101. Make sure you subscribe, you like, retweet, all that good stuff. Follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, at Wrestling IQ 101. And for this episode, we are out.